So it, it took me 18 years to realize my dreams. I was in the corporate world for 18 years, <clears throat> and I was never good at playing politics or the game. How many in here ever worked for a boss that you knew you were smarter than? And you would scratch your head, how the hell did this person get that position? And I would tell him, that was my mistake. I couldn't keep my mouth shut. I was very outspoken. I always, I always spoke my mind. And in the corporate world, that didn't, that didn't work. So I was working for a company. Uh, and prior to that, prior to working for this particular company, I was changing jobs, looking for that perfect job. Some of them I left on my own. One guy was committing accounting fraud. I packed up my Rolodex and my, my certificate and walked out. Other ones, they didn't like what I had to say, even though it was the truth. They didn't want to hear the truth, so I would, I would go on my way. But in this particular day, I went to work. I remember the day. It was May 19, 1998. I refer to it as Black Monday. I went to work like any other day. This day was a little different. I just returned from a vacation with my wife and, and two daughters. Um, and the first vacation I took in a long time, and I walk in Monday morning, get a call from the boss, Mike, come up to the office. Basically, your services are no longer required. So no severance, no warning, no nothing. And this was a company I cleaned up from a huge mess and also changed out the staff. The books weren't reconciled. The bank's accounts weren't reconciled for months. And when I went on this vacation, I forgot to booby trap something. I forgot to booby trap something that would blow up so they would need me. So that's lesson number two. If you're working for someone, especially in the corporate world, you want to make sure that something blows up when you're not there so they need your services. So I am thinking that here I, gotta, here I go again. I got to tell the wife uh, I don't have a job. And I'm already about $100,000 in debt from trying to find that perfect job for the last three or four years. <clears throat> And I pulled off to the side of the road, going home. I don't know how long I was parked on the side of the road, but in my mind kept playing, I can, I can never, ever work for anybody again. I'm an un, I am unemployable. I cannot work for anyone. <clears throat> and then I remembered the Senate televised finance hearings in the fall of 97. And I remember, and anyone remember those? I know this goes back a ways, but there was average Americans uh, televised in front of Congress on TV telling how the IRS ruined their lives, ruined everything. And being a justifiable and righteous guy and always rooting for the underdog, I said, you know what? I think I can help those people, not knowing anything about it. But it just sounded to me that something was wrong. Some, it was, there was some inequality that was going on that just wasn't right. <clears throat> so I talk it over with uh, my lovely wife, Roslyn. I tell her that I want to start helping people with IRS problems. Now, she's the only one who didn't think I was crazy. <clears throat> all my friends, all my colleagues, my friends who were CPAs and attorneys says, you're going to help people that owe taxes? How are you ever going to get paid? <clears throat> so my wife... I love her, she's right there. Uh, she believed in me and she said, go for it. So we did, I took, we took a second mortgage out on the house, paid down some of the debt, and started a, a standalone tax resolution company. Now in the beginning, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what marketing to invest in. I didn't know that you had to stay the course with any one marketing strategy. If I put an ad in the paper and I didn't get a call in two weeks, I pulled it. If I was on the radio for a week or two and nothing happened, I pulled the ad. I didn't know you had to tweak the message, tweak the day part, tweak all this stuff to get it right. <clears throat> I didn't know you should stay in communication with your clients. I didn't know to nurture them. I didn't know you needed to send them a, a, a communique once a month in the mail like a newsletter. I didn't know how to track my marketing. And I really didn't know that you had to have a few things working at the same time. The number one is the loneliest number in the world. 
you never want to be relied, you never want to rely on any one thing. You don't want to rely on one customer. You never want to rely on one vendor. You never want to rely on one bank if you have a line of credit with a bank. One is a very lonely number. And that's why it's important to have multiple marketing strategies. So I went to seminars. I went to conferences. And one of the mistakes I made was at the first seminar I was at, I didn't, purchase, I didn't buy the guy's program. I was still procrastinating. I was still thinking, well, maybe I should, maybe I should, maybe I should. And if I did, I would have been further ahead along at that time. But my point is, is that I made up my mind to invest in myself, learn a new, learn a new trade, and I did. I, I didn't have clients. I never had IRS experience. I never worked, and I'm a very unusual uh, CPA. I never worked a day in my life in public accounting. In the state of Maryland, I was able to get certified without public accounting experience. So I'm your unorthodox, unconventional type guy. But I knew that marketing was the most important thing. I came to believe that marketing was the most important thing in the world, especially being in the retail business when I was growing up. My father was always in the food business, delis. He had a hotel in the Catskills. He had restaurants. And if he never marketed or advertised, he would have never had these businesses. And also in the corporate world, I worked for many consumer product companies. And one of the main things why they grew year to year was because they marketed and advertised. But I looked at what everybody else was doing, and all the accountants and lawyers were marketing. You know, they had their big name in the paper, established 1962. There was a guy in front of a bookcase like this smiling. There were people around the conference table shaking hands. And I thought that's how you did it. But I was wrong. 